Good afternoon. Hope you're enjoying this beautiful day. We're reading through all of God's Word together using the one-year chronological Bible reading plan. We have copies of the, the reading list available in our church lobby, and you can also find the plan on Bible.com and the YouVersion Bible app for your smartphone or tablet. This week, we finished the book of Numbers. The Hebrew title is Into the Wilderness. The book describes the Israelites' journey from Mount Sinai to the Promised Land after God had rescued them from slavery in Egypt. Then it chronicles how they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years after they had rebelled against God and Moses by refusing to go into the Promised Land, fearing that the inhabitants were too strong for them. Chapters 28 and 29 briefly describe several different festivals the Israelites were to celebrate every year to remind them of God's faithfulness. They were to honor the Sabbath day each week to remind them that God had delivered them from slavery. They celebrated the Passover each year to remember how they were saved from the final plague in Egypt by putting the blood of a lamb on their doorposts. Fifty days later was the Feast of Weeks, a harvest celebration where they offered the first fruits of their crops to the Lord. Next came the Feast of Trumpets and the Day of Atonement, followed by the Feast of Tabernacles, where they lived in shelters for a week to remind themselves of their years of wandering in the wilderness. Every one of these festivals tells the story of the Israelite nation, but also points toward the Messiah. Jesus is the true Passover lamb whose blood delivers us from death and takes away the sins of the world. Fifty days after he was raised from the dead came the Feast of Weeks, or Pentecost, which means 50. On that day, the Holy Spirit brought 3,000 people to faith in Christ. A new harvest had begun. When Jesus returns, he will bring all the hosts of heaven with him, with the sound of the archangel's trumpet. Jesus brought salvation once for all by offering his own life for yours. He goes with us through the wilderness of our lives, providing everything that we need day to day. Jesus gives us true Sabbath rest. As Christians, we worship on the eighth day, the day Jesus was raised from the dead. Sunday is the beginning of the new week that looks forward to the new creation Jesus will bring. By the end of Numbers, the entire generation who came out of Egypt had died in the wilderness. Moses had a census taken of the people again. God gave them victory over their enemies, and some of the tribes began to settle on the east side of the Jordan. They were finally poised and ready to enter the promised land. Moses knew that he would not be able to enter the promised land himself, so he reminded the Israelites of all the ways God had provided for and carried them through the wilderness. After finishing the book of Numbers this week, we started reading through Deuteronomy. I'm including a link to the Bible Project's video on Deuteronomy in the description of this video. Since Moses wasn't able to go with the people into the promised land, he gave them a final pep talk by the Jordan River, where he encouraged them to follow Joshua and to be faithful to the covenant that God had made with them at Mount Sinai. Moses reminded them of how God had rescued them from Egypt, made them into his own people, and provided, them through, uh, provided for them through the wilderness. Despite all their grumbling and rebellion, God continued to be faithful to his promises. The word Deuteronomy means second law. Moses explained and clarified the law for the new generation of Israelites, since their parents had all died during their 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. Collections of law codes like Deuteronomy were common in other cultures at the time. They were not used in courts, but served as wisdom literature like Proverbs, which applied the law to everyday life. The law gave them a better way to live as a community. They were to live in such a way that the other people around them would see God's wisdom and justice. Back in Exodus 19, God had called Israel to live as a kingdom of priests who would go between him and other people. 
He promised to bless them so that they would be a blessing, just as he had blessed Abraham and Sarah. Throughout Deuteronomy, we see a biblical vision of human value and dignity worked out in how they were to live their daily lives. These laws are not written to us today, but they are still for us. The Bible Project gives some helpful tips for reading these laws today. First of all, these laws are the terms of the covenant given to Israel at Mount Sinai. Secondly, we shouldn't compare them with modern laws, but with the laws of Israel's neighbors at the time. God consistently called Israel to a higher level of justice and equality than any of the surrounding cultures. Thirdly, it's helpful to discern the core principles underlying each of the laws. That helps us see how they apply to us today. In Deuteronomy 6, right after Moses had reminded them of the Ten Commandments God had given them, he said, Listen, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone, and you must love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your strength. This is a famous Jewish prayer called the Shema that Jew Jews would pray twice a day. The key words in it are listen and love. Listen in Hebrew not only means to hear, but also involves a response. So it really means to obey. Similarly, the word love in Hebrew is not just an emotion, but also a decision. It means showing devotion to God in how you live. Moses went on to say, you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these commands that I am giving you today. Repeat God's commands again and again to your children. Talk about them when you are at home, and when you're on the road, when you're going to bed, and when you're getting up. Tie them to your hands and wear them on your forehead as reminders. Write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. In Jesus' day, the Pharisees took those last commands very literally. They wrote the Ten Commandments on tiny scrolls that they put in little boxes that they tied to their foreheads. Uh, to this day, when you go to the home of a Jewish family, you may find a small box attached to the doorway containing tiny scrolls of the Ten Commandments. But Moses was using picture language to describe how they should have God's commands in their minds and on their hearts. We see that in chapter 10, where Moses says, Now Israel, what does the Lord your God require you? He requires only that you fear the Lord your God and live in a way that pleases him and love him and serve him with all your heart and soul. And you must always obey the Lord's commands and decrees that I am giving you today for your own good. Moses reminded the people of how their parents had rebelled against God at Mount Sinai while Moses was up on the mountain receiving the Ten Commandments. He warned them not to repeat their parents' mistakes and rebellion, but to follow the Lord wholeheartedly. Over the next several days, we'll read the rest of Deuteronomy, leading up to the book of Joshua, where the people finally entered the Promised Land. Please join us tonight in the school gym for a meal at 6 o'clock, followed by Lenten worship at 7. We're going to be having pizza and wings. Our Christ on Trial drama will feature a woman caught in adultery whose life was saved and transformed by Jesus. Worship on Sunday is at 10.30 and 11, with Sunday school and our adult class on Genesis at 9.45. See you soon. Have a great rest of the week.